out of my mind. You turn, I command you. Get out of my mind. Yes. I command you, Lucifer, get out of my mouth. I command you, Lucifer, get out of my mouth. I command you, Satan, get out of my heart. I command you, Satan, get out of my heart. In the name of the Father, Son, Father, Son and, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is a wonderful prayer to bind the evil spirit, the defeated enemy, and to cast him out, command him out of our thought process, because he is the one who gives us negative thoughts and the spirals of negative thoughts. So when we cast him out, God honors then our faith because worries have gone, doubts have left, anxieties have left, and we are right here to focus in the word of God. Dei Verbum says, Catechism of the Catholic Church, quoting Dei Verbum says, that when we focus in the word of God, when we abide in the word of God, God the Father comes us. And with God the Father comes the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the Son of God, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, Saint Michael, all trillions upon trillions, my rights upon my rights, angels come and are with us. Saints come us, our wonderful dear brothers and sisters. So how wonderful we are. Amen. The presence of Amen. Us. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us open the Bible today with Matthew chapter 25. And let us read, maybe Sister Olga can read from verse 1 onwards until verse 13. Okay, thank you. Yes, please. I'll do that. Yes, 25. Yes. And while Sister Olga is reading Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13, tonight yeah. let us prepare our hearts and mind so that the Holy Spirit enlightens our mind and we receive this word in, in its absolute power. This is the parable of the ten wedding attendants. Correct. Yes. Yes, Sister Olga. And then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten wedding attendants took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were sensible. The foolish ones, though they took their lamps, took no oil with them, whereas the sensible ones took flasks of oil as well as their lamps. The bridegroom was late, and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight there was a cry, Look, the bridegroom, go out and meet him. Then all those wedding attendants woke up and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish one said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. But they replied, they may not be enough for us and for you. And, and, and it says not enough for you. You had better go and get and tell it, buy some for yourselves. They had gone out to buy when the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall and the door was closed. The other attendants arrived later. Lord, Lord, they said. Open the door for us. But he replied, In truth I tell you, I do not know you. So stay awake, because you do not know either the day or the hour. Amen. Thank you, Sister Olga. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Hallelujah. this Jesus. is about spiritual health. Everybody say spiritual health. Spiritual health. Everyone, I, I'm just hearing Sister Olga. Spiritual health. Yes. Spiritual health. 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 Spiritual condition. Spiritual condition. Spiritual condition. Spiritual conditions. And spiritual preparedness. Spiritual, spiritual preparedness. preparedness. Amen. So, Amen. we know just this is about 
when the Lord Jesus returns. His coming is expected, but the day, the hour of his coming is unexpected. He has said in Matthew chapter 24, just the preceding chapter before this, it's an extensive discourse, which is the discourse at the Mount of Olivet. And Jesus talks about the preparation and also the signs. But today's focus is about 10 virgins. And just as we have physical health, which is so critical these days, physical health, one of the allegory that we can use to understand this is the blood tests that we do. And then comes the series of chemicals that are in our body. Similarly, in spiritual health, there is one critical element, which is love. Was John chapter four says, God is love. So he doesn't have love or he doesn't, he doesn't possess love, but he is love. So everything about him is love. First Corinthians 13 says, only love we can, a human soul, when he departs from earth, can take only love. Loving faith and loving hope. And that is love. Faith, hope, and love. Love. And Jesus said in John 13, 34, 35, John 14, John 15, John 16, repeatedly, there is only one commandment you need to follow. And on these commandments hangs every other commandment in the 73 divinely inspired books of the Catholic Church, which is the Holy Bible. Now, as Sister Olga read, let us actually read one by one quickly. Um, I would like Brother Don to read verse one so that we reinforce the importance because this is given to us by Jesus. Let us all together, Brother Don, if you could read, please. Yes, brother. Yep. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Amen. Now, listen to what Jesus, Brother Don just read, and Sister Olga earlier. Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven. But it's not. It, he, he said this 2,000 years back, but Hebrews 13.8 says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. forever. He's unchanging. One of the verses in Psalm 119 says, your word is a lamp in my path. In my yes, Mr. Olga. Yes, yes. Wonderful. Yeah. That's... So, we see, Jesus said, it's not the kingdom of heaven may be like or could be but he said he, it will be like 10 virgins who took their lambs now this is important for the rest of the whole uh, parable that we are going to see there are 10 virgins there is lamp there's oil <clears throat> there are five foolish five of them wise we will have to see what is the difference and which category we are. Because Jesus coming is expected. But the day and the hour is unexpected. Now this virgin. As brother Don just read. They took their lamps. And they went out to meet the bridegroom. So they had their lamps. And in the lamp was oil. What is oil? Oil is the Holy Spirit. So they were given their lamps 
the holy spirit the lamps are their spirit so that's why it is the spiritual health and that's the most important that is emphasized in this <clears throat> parable and parable is not just a story it is a story that is used to describe what the kingdom will be like so they have their lamps and they go out to meet the bridegroom the count 10 is actually represents the church not those who are say hindus or muslims but this is about the believers revelation 19 9 says so this foolish and wise virgins are the church so we are not talking about the non church what their condition is that is different we will come to that maybe next time but this is about the condition of believers and out of that 50% out of the 1 billion catholics or 1.2 billion and declining catholics this is about <clears throat> this is about us and out of that 50% so five virgins are foolish so let us read verse 2 maybe brother rohan can read verse 2 Yep. Yes, brother. Now, five of them were wise, and the other five were foolish. Oh man! And please continue with verse three, brother. The foolish ones took their lamps, but didn't bring oil for them. Yes. So the first difference we know is that the foolish ones. Why Jesus calls them foolish? is because they did not have enough they not have oil, oil with them the oil yes correct they did not have oil with them now what is oil oil represents the holy spirit yeah. oil represents the holy spirit and they did not take any oil with them they just took their lamps the lamps had oil the wise virgins also had the lamps and they had oil which is the initial giving of the holy spirit the wise and the foolish as we know further the difference was the foolish did not take oil with them now let us see in verse 4 so maybe um we'll have uh, uh gabriel brother gabriel could you please read verse 4 verse 4 okay. oh. yes verse 4 but the wise brought flask of oil with their lamps amen yeah. amen thank you so, brother gabriel so this is they had extra jar and that is the extra holy spirit the extra prayer that is required in these times in the last times especially what jesus himself is saying extra prayer say everybody extra prayer extra prayer extra yeah. prayer extra prayer extra bible reading everybody extra bible reading extra bible reading extra bible reading extra bible meditating extra extra bible meditating how do we meditate is luke 219 that is mother mary style meditation she did not understand what was happening she could not but she kept it in her heart and she lived it that is what we mean by meditating on the word just like a perfect handmaid for the word now also say extra bible pondering extra, extra bible, bible, pondering. bible pondering again that is in luke chapter 2 after jesus was found after 3 days that's how 
Mary pondered and she continued on Calvary, in Cana, and also in, in the upper room. So this is the this is the extra jar which Brother Gabriel read. Extra oil in the jar, not just only in the lamp, but also in the jar. Verse 5, Brother Gabriel, you can continue with verse 5, please. Okay. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Yes, praise the Lord. Now, at verse 5, we know they have the oil, they have the lamp, both of them. Now, here, all of them, the wise as well as the foolish, both became drowsy. They slumbered. Everybody say they slumbered. They slumbered. They slumbered. And they slumbered. Both wise and foolish. Wise and foolish. And they fell asleep. And they fell and asleep. They fell asleep. They fell asleep. So what was the difference so far? The extra oil. The the oil. Amount, yes. The amount of oil extra. between the foolish and the wise. Oil is the Holy Spirit. And they both had oil in their lamps, which was first given to them, which is the congregation, the Catholics, the church, the baptized in the church. And the amount of oil the wise carried was extra in the jar. Oil is the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't come if you don't read Bible, if you don't. That's why our liturgy has the Bible. That's why whole mass is the Bible. Everything, John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 says, everything is given out of the word of God. So, for Holy Spirit, the author of the Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, the author of the Bible confirms the word of God once the word of God is dynamically proclaimed and lived. And believed. Only then God can honor faith. Hebrews 11, 1. And God doesn't honor doubt or half-hearted faith. God honors full faith. And God rewards faith. Hebrews 11, 6. So it is a personal relationship with the risen Christ. Giving your wounds to Jesus. Giving your pains to Jesus. Making some sense in our personal life about the wounds of Jesus. So Holy Spirit can comfort us, heal us, strengthen us continually. And prepare us for his witness and for his worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, verse 6, uh, be, uh, Jessica, are you there? Jessica, Brother Raymond, Jessica, would you like to read verse 6? Yes. Yeah, sure. Yes. At midnight, the choir rang out. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Amen. Wonderful reading, Jessica. Now, at midnight... When every activity is quiet, the cry rang out. What cry? We know in Revelation, the book of Revelation, Th Thessalonians, Matthew, Daniel, cry. The angels would come on the four corners of the earth, such huge, big angels. They would just stand on the four corners of the earth, communicating with each other. And they'll give a loud cry. And whose name will they cry? Jesus. Every corner of earth will hear one name. Jesus. He is the bridegroom. And we will be all called out. Whatever state of soul, whatever the spiritual health is, we will be called out and summoned before the Lord by angels. Verse 6. Okay, let us, uh, Sister Elizabeth, if you would like to read verse 7. 
then all those virgins got up and put their own lamps in order. Yes. So at this stage, they have they are putting their in order. They have their lamps. So far, foolish and wise are they have got up, they have woken up now. And they are putting their lamps in order. So so far is good. What's the problem here? Let us see. Verse 8. Um I'll read probably Sister Elizabeth, you can read verse 8 as well, please. Yeah. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Yes. So now the foolish ones, the foolish ones say to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Because our lamps are going out, they just had enough just for the lamp, but they did not have any extra. The oils are going out. And in verse 9, they replied, no, there may not be enough for both of us. So instead, you go to those who are selling this oil and buy some for yourselves. So they refused. The wise had enough oil. Now let us see what Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 says. So I'll just go out to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 and says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with another wine, the new wine, which Mother Mary interceded for us, all of us, not just the wedding couple in Cana, but all of us, that new wine, we have to be drunk with. That's the Holy Spirit, God himself. So we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is why Holy Spirit himself through St. Paul warns us, cautions us, that what kind of wine we are filling ourselves with continuously. Because filling ourselves with the wine in verse 18 will lead us out of the kingdom of God, out of the kingdom of heaven. There will be no part of the Holy Spirit. This is an, a command saying, do not get drunk with wine. Good. But what about the next part of the verse? It says, instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, do not get, okay, I don't drink wine, that is good. But the second thing is, am I being filled continuously with the Holy Spirit? Because if I'm not, if I'm not, then Holy Spirit, how can he abide in me? Because not just as baptism that I am told to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but it is continual. You need to be continually filled. You need to experience the life in the Spirit. And how? Again, we said, first and foremost is Jesus Christ. Personal relationship with Christ. Living for Him. Second, being filled with God's word, prayers, giving thanks to God, singing to God, praising God, serving others, and exactly tuning in to Holy Spirit. We can tune into FM, but that's not good enough. Need to tune in to the Holy Spirit. Surely we can catch his frequency. Because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. They know me. They will hear my voice. And that's the oil that we are talking about. And that's what the wise had. And let us go on to now the next verse. What 
uh, Jessica and Sister Elizabeth read in verse 789 is they said, we are not going to give our oil to you. Now you go and buy. Now what is buying? What is buying? Revelation chapter 3 verse 18 gives us some more light on what it means to buy the oil. Let us go into Revelation quickly, 3 verse 18. And the word of God says, and this is Jesus talking in Revelation. Jesus says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. In the verse 17, Jesus says, you say I am rich. This is to the church during this end times. The spirit of God talking. Jesus saying to the church, to the believers, you say I am rich. What rich? Americans, Europeans, Australians, and other parts of the country. You say, they are saying I am rich. And Jesus is saying, you say I have acquired wealth and power and some kind of health and you do not need anything else? Verse 17. But you do not realize, Jesus says, that you are wretched. You are pitiful. You are poor, spiritually poor. You are blind and blinded and confused by the devil. And you are naked. You're not clothed in God's glory, in God's holy garments. You're poor. You're blind. You're naked. And Jesus says, buy from me. Gold refined in fire. That means your faith. How your soul is, how pure the soul is, that's what counts. Purity of your soul, refined in fire. That's your 100% faith in Christ during these times. So that you can cover your shameful nakedness. Praise the Lord. And that is what they are saying. Now you go and buy this. Cover your nakedness. Cover your shameful habits. You're poor, you're wretched, you're naked, you're blind, you're confused. You can't listen. You can't see the sign of times. But verse 10 says, but while, so they go on to buy these foolish ones, they go on to buy the Holy Spirit. They don't have extra prayer. They don't have extra worship. They don't sing. So they, they are now going to buy in verse 10. They go on their way. They're trying to buy the oil, which is the Holy Spirit. And then the bridegroom comes. comes. Aha. Now it's the, it's the absolute sad situation. Your spiritual health. Now the virgins who were ready, the five wise ones who were praying, reading the Bible with Mother Mary, going through the sacraments, going to confession, having the Eucharist, sacramental life, loving, loving. Because it doesn't matter if I say one trillion divine mercies. And if I have no love, God will clearly say you are a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. So, love. And the virgins who already went in to the wedding banquet and then the door was shut. The door was shut. Cut. The five wise virgins 
who had the abiding presence of the holy spirit living holy life went into the wedding banquet because jesus is the bridegroom you know in how the, the the holy spirit has said that jesus he says come uh, is father errol with us here Uh, no, Father Errol is not yet. Yeah, Father Errol will join us. Okay. So, you know, in Revelation, it says, Spirit, Spirit of God says, Come, Jesus, and the bride, which is the church, which is you and I, say, Come, Jesus. So, they are, they are accepted in the wedding feast, the wedding banquet. And the door is shut. Verse 11 says, Later, the others also came. So the five foolish ones now come because they are going into the marketplace to buy the Holy Spirit, to buy, as we read in Revelation chapter 18, 19, 17. They are going, but they can't buy because it cannot be bought. So they come now and they say, Sir, sir, open the door for us. But the Lord replies, verse 12, he says, I tell you the truth, I do not know you. And it is extremely painful when Jesus tells someone, doesn't matter, anyone can say in the whole world, I do not know you, reject you, despise you, hate you, humiliate you, insult you, whatever, doesn't matter. But when the Lord Jesus says that, in truth, I don't know you. That's the creator. In his image, we, whom we are created in and also redeemed. If he says, I don't know you, that is absolutely, eternally painful. And therefore, Jesus says in his own 2000 years back, and now it's applicable to us. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day yeah, or the hour. Now, the last question. First thing, prayer, as we said, if I pray divine mercy and if I just recite it as a ritual, as a habit, with a monologue, not entering into a dialogue with Jesus, it's useless. Because I'm not giving Jesus a chance to talk to me. I just recite some prayer as if God just hears and doesn't want to talk. It is, that is buying. To give God full chance to talk to me back in that prayer. Because God wants to talk. And we must tune to listen. Dialogue. Wonderful. And that's the difference they had. Living in the obedience, reflecting. Now, the question is, how much amount of oil do you and I have? That is for our own reflection, serious reflection. Because the doors will be shut otherwise. If we just carry the oil just for the lamp, you see, that's the difference between wise and foolish. They both had initially the Holy Spirit, but then they lost. It ran out because of the, the worries of this life that choked the fruit. Because of, because of um, the rock solid heart, sometimes unforgiveness. Don't allow the devil to make you unforgiveness. Or in the walk in the state of unforgiveness. Sacramental life. Rosary. Confession. And love. Love. One word that summarizes Christian. Wise virgins is love. And. You see. We need to be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. When they say go and buy. We can't buy. Because. It has a price to pay. The first time it's a gift. The Holy Spirit is a gift. 
but after that it has to be bought bought before in preparation in anticipation of the coming and that's why we need to pay a price that is we need to be to not like the church of uh, revelation 3 17 and 18 but we need we need to pay the price for pure faith that is called buying paying the price but in advance we need to be enduring in our faith walk against all the diabolical attacks against us with the full armor of god so that's why we don't want to one thing we don't want to fail is this test that jesus has said to us in matthew 25 we don't want to fail this test we don't want the lord to say i don't know you and we close this with glorious honor to mother mary and glorious all glory and power and honor to jesus and we say lord jesus it is the heart of father to save everyone each and every person catholics non catholics hindus all past present and future and that's why you sent your son to die for us now that you have given us this wonderful teaching which is truth and which imparts life not merely teaching but john 6 john 15:3 it sanctifies us john 6 it gives us new life it imparts spirit and that teaching we get into the good soil from here into our heart amen praise the lord hallelujah you holy mother of god pray for us in us now and at the hour of our day and all glory be to the father and, and to, to the, the son and to the holy spirit as it was, as it was in, the in the beginning is now and ever shall, shall be world 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 without without amen. Amen. amen join for our next where brother don will lead us in divine mercy and intercession so Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us Hallelujah, be... Jesus. Glory to you, Lord. Praise you. Hallelujah. Let us continually fill you, Lord. Hallelujah. Fill with the Holy Spirit. Praise you, Lord. Glory and to you, Lord Jesus. Enduring faith. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Jesus. I'm Thank just you. Thank you, Father. Errol is.